That corner right there, yeah. you can see him coming here and then, then turn around to the side. Yeah, because it's side coming down profile. The, yeah, side down the back yeah, side yeah. here. Yeah, right. Okay. right, that's Braveheart. Yeah. We're right. going to cool down. That's and the we'll... Mel Gibson look yeah. right there. <laughs> if there are two things I love in life, it's food and sports. I'm Wes Bryan, a born and bred North Carolina kid, and I'm going to take you on a journey to some of the best spots in Charlotte to get your grub on with some of the best and brightest athletes and personalities. Back in the day, I had plenty of games. And now I'm here to show you that Wes got range. Wes got range, episode 10. 10 episodes deep. We're here in the beautiful epicenter at Wild Wings Cafe. One of my favorite spots to eat. Wings, burgers, sliders. Anything you could think of is here, and Panthers legend Mohsin Mohammed is here. It's going to be a fantastic time. I'm going to try to brave heart wings. The hottest there is. It should be a lot of fun. And as I always say, enough with the talking. Let's go in here and uh, heat it up. West Guy Range here at Wild Wings Cafe. This is one of my favorite places in Charlotte to eat. But today we're gonna go where no man has gone before, at least not where I've gone before. The hottest wings the in hottest the wings. building, Braveheart. We're not talking Mel Gibson or anything like that, but I think I'm up for the challenge. We got the marketing manager, Sharon, and the owner, the man of the hour, Mohsin Mohammed, Carolina Panthers legend, you know him. Guys, what do you think? How am I gonna? Stand up to these. Uh, well, you, you might need to be Mel Gibson with you. You think right so? There. No, I think you know. But they, they are a challenge. You know, it's funny as we had this whole initiation process. Okay. You know, when when we you know came into the ownership of the group, right. everyone had to try okay. one of the brave hearts, right? Okay. I took a bite. I kind of stopped it. Okay. The first bite, my lips. So you didn't. You didn't the clean. I'm gonna clean, clean the wing. Clean the bone. Yeah. That's the challenge. Gotta clean the bone. Okay. I'm gonna clean it. Okay. All right. So Sharon, tell us what goes into these hot wings. All right, well, we start with two sets of hot peppers, habanero okay. and Thai. Right. And we add some lemon juice, we add some seasoning, we add some hot sauce, we add Tabasco, we add yeah. salt, we add pepper, and we let it cook for four and a half hours to get all the hotness. Okay, I'm starting to sweat a little bit already, just a little bit. All right, so that's what we got. That's what goes into it, all this lovely stuff right here. Yeah, well, I, I'm gonna tell you this too, it, it, and not a lot of people know this, but um, everything in our restaurant is made from scratch. And these okay. are all original recipes. Okay. And Diane Crowley, who is amazing, uh, you know, chef in her own right, okay. you know, come up with a lot of these recipes. But everything okay. in this, you, you wonder why the food tastes so good while in cafes. Yeah. Yeah. Everything is I made love from it. scratch. Yeah. All right. Well, look, I got my milk yeah. right here. Yeah. Okay. You don't need that milk. I feel good about <laughs> it. All right. Here we go. <laughs> TV go once again. Braveheart wings. Let's see what we got. Right. So the tingle should be kicking in pretty soon here. Yeah. It is. Right. <laughs> They're pretty hot. Yeah. They're tasty though. It's not a sauce where it's just hot heat. It's, Override, it's that's what you think. It's There's flavor. got flavor. Yeah. There's flavor in there. Now you might need a towel with that. You need a I'm towel. I'm feeling so pretty good right yeah. now. Okay. I'm cleaning the wing. Okay. I'm cleaning the wing. Okay. I'm starting to sweat a little bit. Yeah, he is sweating a little bit. That's a little bit. You feel good about it, right. go get you another one. These are tasty, though. I like them. You want to challenge me for two? I mean, you know, if you feel up to it, Wes, I mean, I know you do a lot of these shows, but right. yeah, yeah, go ahead and, and if you're feeling up to it. Well, they should know better. Mm -hmm. huh? Yeah, these things are pretty. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we'll do a flat this time. Do a flat okay. this time, yeah. There's a lot of flavor in the flats. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you know the first part of the earthquake, you know, is a, is a big trauma. But the aftershocks are, are just as devastating. You notice as he's talking trash, I'm just no, I'm just you know wiping your I'm corner. I'm just over here eating. Go ahead, get yeah. your corner. <laughs> <laughs> right here. All right, back at Wild Wing Cafe, you see we got the spread going here. We still got Sharon, and hey, we still got Mohsin Mohammed, Panthers legend here with us. But we're gonna go into a lot of topics as we eat this delicious food. But Sharon, what do we have here? Let the viewers know what we got because it sure looks fantastic. Mm. All right, so we're going to start with our grande queso, okay. which is queso, taco meat, all sorts of good toppings in there, served with some delicious chips. Um, for another appetizer, we have our ultimate nachos. And that's not the taco meat in Moose's shirt, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right, here we go. All right, we got the nachos. We got the nachos, and right here, 
we have our wings. Yes. Obviously, we've got oh. some great flavors going on here. We got Crazy Daisy. We got fajita. We got Gold Rush. Mm. We got a little lemon pepper. And we can't have anything else without yeah. our burgers. Right. And this is our brand new LTO burger. It's our pimento cheese burger. Okay. It's got great toppings, great flavor, whole bunch of goodness mm -hmm. going on there. Wow. All right. Well, now, well, thank you, Sharon. You well, have been excellent today. So, yeah, say hello to TV Land out there. And thank you. We're You're gonna welcome. enjoy all of this food as we get into it Perfect. with Moose and Mohammed. Yeah. Now, let's get right down to it, Moose. Yeah. Now, for those of you who don't know, Moose has been knowing me since I was what? Yeah, you must have been about 13 or yeah, 14 13, years 14, old. High school, young yeah, high school guy. High school guy. Yeah, he was like, what'd yeah. you find this guy? This guy's, you know, he thought I was a pretty big kid for high school. I don't uh -huh. know, they made him like that in Michigan. Right. Right? I, yeah, well, they make him that big, but I tell you, it's rare to see him down here. That Yeah. The, the feet on the kid at 14. Yeah. He might have been in a 14 or Yeah, 15 yeah. I worked his first camp yeah. as well, so me and Moose go way back. But let's talk about Michigan a little bit. Michigan State College Football started this past weekend. We That's saw right. how dominant. Alabama one and you played for Nick Saban at Michigan State. So what was your experience like there? And people see Nick Saban and how intense he is. What was it like playing for that guy? Yeah, it was. A, I had a ball playing for Nick, you know. Okay. Um, and you know, I played for Nick before he was sort of coach guru. So, right. You know, we, right. I guess we helped mold each other a little bit. Okay. So speak, no. But uh, you know, Nick, Nick was a great guy. Um, you know, he was very tough. You know, he's, he's a disciplinarian type of guy, but he was. Uh, uh, he, he loved to celebrate wins in, in the sense that, uh, you know, everyone is doing their job, everybody knows the responsibilities and roles, and, you know, um, you have to have uh, uh, celebrations in those types of victories and successes when, 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 that, when that type of foundation works and that, and that format works on the field. So, uh, you know, Nick, Nick had, we had fun, but, uh, you know, everyone sort of knew what they had to do, go out there and perform. How many times did he have to get on? Every day. <laughs> Every day. Yeah. I, 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 that, yeah. Did he wear the, the straw hat like he likes to wear now? Yeah. That's no, no I'm just kidding. You know, Nick never really had to get. It, for the guys that do their job right. and understand what they have to do and yeah. go out there and perform, th th there was very little that okay. Nick said or had to communicate with you on. It was just like, what's up? And you could joke okay. with him and there was a different relationship. The guys who, who operated on the fringes, those are the guys that really okay. you know, had the problems. All right, so you come to the NFL, yeah. second round pick. That's right. Now you had some great season in the NFL. Two-time Pro Bowler, had an All-Pro season. You had some fantastic statistical seasons. One year, 16 touchdowns. Sure. What was it like during your career? How were you able to stay on so long? And what was your preparation like? Like for a receiver, what keys were you looking for to know? Okay, hey, I can come out and dominate against this team, or a certain player, you come out and say, hey, I know I can make this big catch. What was that like? Well, I, I mean, there's a lot of questions embedded, yeah. embedded in there. I, I guess I'll start. Yeah, you hit me with a few. So yeah. I, I, I guess I'll start with this: that in order to become successful in the game, um, I had to become a student of the game, yeah. right? And understanding what that meant, you know, being able to. Uh, break the game down to a science, you know, studying the film, studying my opponents, um, studying myself and how I wanted to get better um, after every single season, you know, and improving on things. I think it, it, it's very easy to have one good season, but to string them back to back to back. Consistent. When people know uh, what they're going to be facing, it, it's probably one of the more difficult challenges. Now, who was the best corner that you went against? And give me a week of preparation against that guy. Yeah. Um, I would say because uh, I know you saw Prime. You went up against Prime. I went up against Prime. Um, it was later in his career, but he was still Prime. I went up against Prime when he was at Dallas. Okay. And you know, it was it, it, there's not a lot you could do when when you got Prime on the other, when you had Prime on the other side because he was um, his catch up speed and the things that he can do was were. Um, you know, so versatile to the game. Did he talk to you a lot? Oh, he talked the whole game. <laughs> talked the whole big fella. That's what they called me. Big fella, big fella. Oh, big fella, don't come in here. Don't put your hands on me now. Well, he said, I ain't trying to make no tackles. I'm going to let you know that right now. Don't Just don't hurt me out here. But, uh, but no, De Dion, I would say that week of preparation was really about body position because the thing I learned about Dion is that he wasn't real physical. So if you could position your body in between him and the ball, you could make a lot of plays on him. And so that was one of the things I really tried to focus on when I played against him. Right, okay, so now you and Steve Smith, one of the greatest tandems we've seen in the Queen City, in the NFL. 
where do you rank you guys as far as the great tandems in the league and who are some of the great tandems that you've seen in your time that you really like and respect it? Well, man, you know, I mean, everyone's going to say, you know, um, Jerry Rice, John Taylor tandem. Stuff I'm a like Niner that. guy. Jerry yeah, Rice. Not, not Niner guy. Uh, <laughs> you know, even the days when, um, uh, you know, you can look at, you know, Philly, Philly, Philly combos with, um, with, with Urban Fryer there. You can look at when Randy Moss was with Chris Carter back in Minnesota. I mean, there's there's a lot of different combinations you can look at. I would say, for, for me and Steve, ha had we played together for a longer period of time, boy, it would have really been special. But the few years that we did play together were so lasting in people's minds because each one of us went over a thousand yards, you know, in, in, in multiple seasons with each other. and. Our style was so complimentary to each other. Right, yeah. Right? yeah. You know, you had the big banging guy, yeah. and then you had, you know, Smitty, who was the go go get a deep guy, but we both could switch those roles because Smitty could bang too. Yeah. And I could get the deep ball as well. So, you know, and I think you know, the thing that made us unique too was, was that um, there was never enough balls on the field. We, we wanted the ball so bad. You guys were always open. Always fighting. Always and we were never, yeah, covered. Always <laughs> open. Always open. <laughs> Okay, so then you went to Chicago for a brief period, and we know in your career you never got a chance to play for the Tom Brady's, the Peyton Man, and things like that. Now, from the quarterbacks that you played with, and now we look at the guy in Carolina, Cam Newton. Yeah. Now, we see at the beginning of his career he had some struggles, but now he's ascended to MVP levels. As a receiver, what have you seen in him when he was struggling with, like, with the guys that you played with? Yeah. What did you see in him the way he's taking that next step the way he is? Yeah, you know, I, well, I'm gonna say I, I have had some sort of struggles throughout my career. <laughs> Having a consistent quarterback, yeah. I've, you know, I've had the quarterback carousel. Well, what was some of the guys? Yeah, Kyle Lloyd. Oh, Rex yeah. Grossman, Kyle Lloyd, Steve Grossman, Berline. So Steve Berline, Brian Greasy. Kerry Collins. Kerry Collins. A gauntlet there. of yeah, guys. Yeah, gauntlet of guys okay. in there. Uh, Rodney Pete, I mean, the list goes on. Right. Um, um, but I think. When I look at Cam Newton and I analyze this guy, I mean, a lot of people forget the kid is still 27 yes. years old, right? Yes. I mean, he's still a kid, and he's, uh, you know, ascended to this uh, level of greatness in, in a very short amount of time, which uh, I think, you know, in itself is quite a, a, a feat because not a lot of quarterbacks have done that in such a short period of time in their playing career. But the, the, the specific things that I've looked at, um, you know, there's an, uh, uh, an acronym called uh, KYP which is know your personnel. And I think for Cam Newton, he know he's starting to learn his guys better. Um, I think losing Kelvin Benjamin, that safety blanket, forced him Tell. to be disciplined in his reads. It forced him to throw to smaller receivers, which is, is more difficult to do than throwing to a big target yeah, like a Kelvin. Yeah, the catch radius is the catch same. radius is not the same, right? Yeah. Um, and so it forced him to stay more disciplined in some of his, uh, in some of his reads, uh, his accuracy had to in, uh, improve. And, and now what I see Cam Newton improving on is his touch and being able to make every throw. So can you make that same route throw? Um, we know he's really good on the curl routes. His outcut routes are really good. But can he make that corner route? Yeah. Can, he, can he make that throw in the, to the scene player? Can he make that touch pass to his check down pass, right? And so, um, you know, increasing the amount of throws Call it quivers in his, you know, uh, you know the arrows in, in, in his pack. Yeah. Can he increase the amount of throws that he has in, in his arsenal? I really see Cam starting to do that and become more of a mature player, handling the media better, you know, handling interviews a little bit better than he did uh, as a young man. You look at that and just salivate. You said, man, if I could. I could have played with that guy, the numbers I put up. Yeah. That's what the contracts these guys are getting. Yeah. But, but the one thing I will say is that despite what uh, quarterback I had, I always had good chemistry, right? Yeah. Because one thing I try, try to take pride on is being a good communicator, right? And, and being on the same page. Yeah. And I'm not afraid, I wasn't afraid to put that work in um, to get on the same page with my quarterback. And so uh, I would have had a lot of fun playing with Cam. But we're going to get to this food because it looks fantastic. We're going to tear this up. That's for men on cheeseburger. Dang it, what I say on the old show look magnifique! Uh -huh. Exactly. And so, it's good too, I like this now. You can't beat it now too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can see here we're chopping it down. 
all this food is so delicious. Like it's in one of the great, great spots in Charlotte Eaton. I'm not just saying that because we're doing the show here. I've eaten here a few times and Moose can attest to that as well. He's seen me in here a time or two. Well, I like to close that. My Super Bowl prediction, I don't know, Ben. I said Carolina on the way here. But history just has me uh, thinking that I mean, I can't remember the last thing that lost and went right back. I remember I thought my Niners were going to do it, and I was broken hearted. Yeah. Going to New England. Oh. I'm going to go Green Bay. Oh. In the Super Bowl. It's on tape. I well, can't Wes, take it back. I'll tell you this, Wes. I, I can remember a team <laughs> that went, lost it, and went right back. Okay. And it was the Denver Broncos. I okay. mean, you know, they lost the Super Bowl right. and went right back next year and proved that they, you know, had the moxie right. to do it. So, and that was only a couple of years ago, and they won it this year. So, um, I, I think that okay, Carolina yeah, sort of is in that same, in that same, same boat. Okay. I think Carolina has ability to do that. I'm gonna take Carolina and a, a, rem a rematch of my first Super Bowl. Okay, appearance. Carolina and uh, New England. Yeah, so I got Carolina and New England, and I and I, and I want to see what I think is gonna happen is. Um, you know, you're going to see a couple of guys have a coming out party this year. I mean, obviously, we know what Kelvin Benjamin can do. I know you're going to go Funches. But you know I'm going Funches. Yeah. You know I'm okay. going Funches. Plus, you know, he's a Detroit guy. I'm kind of, you know. Okay. The so D? I'm, I'm, uh, he's from Detroit. But, I, but, but, but even more than that, I think he has the right approach and attitude, body style, the frame. And, okay. And Reminds you a lot of 87, I would imagine. Well, people say he's like a younger version of 87. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if he's mean enough. I might have to go put some gunpowder in his food. <laughs> Make it mean like you used to do the pit bulls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There. So, okay. yeah, put a little bit of gunpowder. All right. So, so you said Carolina will. I think Carolina and um, uh, and, and, and Carolina finally wins their first championship. Wow. There's been a lot of things that have have uh, the, the Panthers have defied historically. Okay. Uh, odds and whatnot. You can see that uh, Carolina Panther pride just brimming. Yeah. yeah. Right well, well it, it is, but for the right reason, because I'm critical. I'm critical of Carolina Panthers when, yeah. they're, when they're not on their game. I've heard. You. But yeah. you know, they won a division three years straight. When mm -hmm. have they ever done that? Right. Yeah. They've got two winning records. They got the best record in, in football last year, and they finally got an MVP. You know. Yeah. And Newton. And on the defensive side, I think the real key there is, you know, looking at how strong that defense is. Okay. You know? They so, are. They're really good. Yeah. They're really good. I just like, like I said, I think New England will win the Super Bowl because, uh, like I said, the guys they added this offseason, when I saw they added Martellus Bennett to go with the Gronk, I was like, who approved that trade? Okay? <laughs> because you know Brady loves the tight ends. Now he's got another dynamic tight end to go with Gronk, who to me is one of the five most dominant players, arguably, in football. Chris Hogan's an underrated uh, possession guy. Then the intangibles. I'm a big intangibles guy. And when 12 comes back off that suspension, which Tom Brady's one of my five favorite players ever, when he comes back off that suspension, he's going to be breathing fire. And he's going to propel that team to get to the Super Bowl and win it again. I think Green Bay, if they can get home field, which I think they'll probably have a good chance to do this year, I think it'll be tough for Carolina or somebody to go up there in that cold, man. So. There you have it, NFL predictions. Moose going with the hometown Panthers. Surprise, surprise. No surprise. And, and I like the New England Patriots. So, like I said, the food was delicious, Moose. Always. Everything, the wings, the nachos were fantastic. That burger with the pimento cheese was awesome. So come down to Wild Wings. Check it out whenever you get a chance. We're here at the Epicenter. Fantastic, Moose. It's been a pleasure, my man. All right. We've come a long way. Long West got range. We out of here. I am stuffed. Every time I come to Wild Wing Cafe, I eat till I'm about to explode. The wings, the nachos, the burgers were fantastic. Shout out to Mohsin Mohammed, Panthers legend. Great episode for you guys. 10 deep. Thanks for you guys for watching. And it's football season. Enjoy everything as we kick it off. Panthers, Broncos. It's going to be a fantastic football season. NFL, college, high school. And you know I'm going to be in front of my TV. And I'm always going to be eating it up. We out.